don't get it right, I really feel personally the city of Minneapolis is in trouble. We have to get it right for their sake, for our future, for all of us to get along and show the leadership, adult leadership, to show that understanding the cultural nuances that is happening in the city. But I agree with what you said. You know, the handling uh, is, is a little bit different and we have to take seriously that issue. Same level of accountability. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know that I, I do that and I do that every day. Okay. That's what I'm just asking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any questions? Um, yes. Yes. Um, so I wonder if the students could address um, how cultural competency has gone backwards at the school. Were there staff that were advocating for them that were laid off or are no longer there? And sure. Who in the administration they brought the I will. I was want was them to really come in. I can really tell you, it was never hired uh, somebody who is really culturally competent. By the way, South oh, High School went backward in cultural competency, and to whom in the specific people in the administration the concerns about so with, uh, security were brought. Um, on Friday, we had a meeting, and it was with the students and the parents. We talked about the issues at the school, and we mostly talked about Officer Lovett. He is, he is a problem in our school. He basically gets in, he gets involved in all the fights, and he has beat up not one, not two, but three students, up to a point where they had to be, like the last one had his ribs broken, I think. And um, we've, we talked to um, Ms. Sattler about this. And we only have like two teachers that really understand us. Like that's Mr. Olivari and Mr. Hassan. And at the end of the day, Mr. Alibari has classes. Mr. Hassan leaves after second hour. And other than that, we really don't have much support in the building. I would say Mr. Alibari and um, the other my teacher, but also um, our vice principal, um, Ms. Webb. She's a really good advocate for um, us, my students. And um, she was the one who, on the Thursday incident, there was actually one officer who called a group of Somali kids all animals. And she got to the point where she was really upset and she told him that he has no rights to call like, students animals when she's the adult there and like he should talk to her first. And um, I would say she's a really big part of the Somali community at South High and she, she's a really good um, administrator and she like targets a problem with our Somali students and any other students. Um, so I would say that. Thank you. Steve, there are about 186 students, just 8% uh, as you as you reported, uh, out of 1,700, let's say. Uh, there is not one counselor at South High who speaks uh, Somali, uh, at least understands it. So I would really say that it's, it moves us to figure it out what the, the differences of, of the new communities are and those who have been here for some time. What I mean, what I mean by it is really that sometimes because you're coming from one one country, that doesn't mean the needs are the same. These children are either born here or grew up, so their level of English and sophistication is different than when you are, for example, just for example, attending attending the Wellstone or Roosevelt High School. So again, as I said, it, uh, the district and all of us, including us, need to understand what the differences are and the needs of the community. Yes, you. Oh, when did that happen, when an officer called students all animals? And what was the name of that officer? I have well, um, Why don't we sorry. just not say the name, just say when it happened, no name calling. It was, um, yeah, it was my like, after Thursday after the fight. It happened, it was probably like 10 minutes later, we were officers. Thursday after the fight and, and no names. And are these officers employed by the board or are they uh, Minneapolis police officers? Anything employed by the board anyway. But, so, but, but through the superintendent, as you know, we don't employ, we have the policy board. Of course, we have the superintendent. So are they, the are they police officers security guards? No, this is the security. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, this yeah. is the security. Let's say the security. security. This issue really needs, is a very sensitive. It needs to be dealt with. It's much better to stop it here. It's a, a name calling issues going on. Uh, we told you the time, it's much better to talk that in a private in a private manner. Do you have any specifics on the call to action, what could happen from here to make these students feel safe when they go to school? I can really tell you as a board, but I want them to really uh, tell, tell us what they need to happen yeah. first. Yeah. Okay, what do you need, what do you need, what do you need to happen at the school? You see your call. Um, we need more admin teachers like, who understand us and also security. Um, to make us feel safer, and we also need like just 
more parents involved in the school and more teachers involved in the school and to talk to us and talk with students and for like any any other situation that like goes out of hand again. So it's easier to talk like, for the teachers and the staff members to get involved with the students instead of just sitting back and like, just waiting for it to come bomb to like explode. I can tell you what's already happening in the district and what we should be doing. Uh, uh, first, as I said, every child at any grade level, he or she has to be safe. And that safety starts with us. It's our responsibility. At this, they have to emotionally, psychologically, and also physically, they have to be safe. Now, if the security is about cultural misunderstanding, or as they say, uh, of what we, we just talked about, we have to fix it. So security will definitely be an issue. Safety will be a second issue. Uh, a third would be truly to them to understand, especially those who have been complaining about getting into advanced classes, to have the guidance and the support that they need. Fourth, as I just told you, there are programs in South High already and other schools that can deal with the cultural differences and bridge people to really be a better places. And remember, we all come from different places, even within the city, let alone the countries that we're from. We need adults who can guide us along with the leadership of the building, the leadership of the board. And finally, again, as I said many, many times, again and again and again, we, the new community of the African-American community, we have reached out to the traditional African-American community for a long time. And, and I, last Tuesday, when we had a board meeting, and I'm going to say what I said in that, that there's no way, no how, we've been running the amount of businesses and opportunities we're running without the African-American community coming before us and giving the ultimate price of being in the United States. We get it, but they may not get it. So we have to find ways to do so and, and, and to figure it out. Also, we want our African-American brothers and sisters to understand that, especially if you are from Africa and Somalia, we went through a civil war. We're still going through a civil war. That has de essentially decimated the community from that country, and people are really struggling with it. So they also need to understand and have empathy and sympathy. So when you are you know, a teenage, I have, uh, four children, two of whom are, are all boys, they fight all the time. Uh, and and who, who really wouldn't? That, that happens. But when, how do we avoid? Would we avoid again, as I said, it's cultural competencies and understanding the community. But one thing that we are really stressing is that, and we want the media especially to help us out, it's really that it's so easy to say the two groups are fighting. The Somali community has nothing to fight with the African American community. Because without them, we would not even be around. So how you can fight? So that is another fight with the Somali community has engaged or we have engaged. We have been reaching out, and one of the leaders that we have been working with, Alf Flowers, to come along with Abdul Saab Bihi to also tell you what they have been working on quickly. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, first, first of all, I want to uh, uh, say, uh, you know, put uh, kids to be called animals. That's a uh, a real situation that uh, I think the public school can deal with because there should be no uh, officer in any school that calls any kid, no matter what race, uh, uh, animal. And, and my part in this is uh, uh, working with uh, Abzak B. and Hussein is about uh, history. And the state of Minnesota have uh, forgotten African American history. And, and so it's so easy to see what the Somali community is going through uh, today because our history is not being talked about on a statewide level. I think we have to uh, work on that uh, uh, with the Department of Ed and the, uh, and the governor and the change of curriculum to make sure you have African American and uh, African history in the schools uh, so we won't run into these problems. Our kids do not, even though when the Voting Rights Act uh, got passed in 1964. I talked to a whole group of night and none of them knew uh, what happened uh, when we were able to vote. So this is a serious situation. I take it serious. That's why I've been working with the Somali community. I think I take our history serious and, and I hope uh, uh, this the media take this situation serious. Uh, you've heard kids been called animals out of their names, uh, been maced, uh, you know, we're talking about the Somali community, but it was other kids there, too, that were hurt in this uh, incident uh, that I think uh, uh, they're trying to push it up under the rug. But I thank Hussein Samatar for uh, putting this together as a school board member to make, uh, let's talk about it. It's about race. It's about us not knowing our history again. And it's about us uh, making it happen. 
and, and uh, telling our Somali uh, 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 friend, uh, brothers and sisters that came from Somali that we are in support of them. I feel for uh, the ones that were uh, called out their name. We've uh, been through it in our community before, but now it's time for change. And the first change is to really talk about African American history and the United States of America even though it's a brutal, ugly history, we need to talk about it so our kids, because our impact on our kids education-wide, achievement gap, if they don't know who they are, how can they learn? They don't know who they are. And I, any leader can say this is what's going on if you are African-American. So I'm just uh, glad to be here standing beside uh, Hussein uh, Abzak Behe and the rest of the Somali community. Uh, because we will continue this fight and hopefully we get a change. The thing I would like to say already in the summertime is students and leader Al already said. All I'm trying to say is that to confirm for about six years we have been working together as a Somali American and uh, African American community. And uh, we have reached a lot. What we are seeing right now is another crucial thing. It's lack of resources, it's a lack of understanding. All I can blame is misunderstanding. This morning we had a meeting with the principal, all of us, and uh, I really appreciate the work she's trying to do, but we need to do changes. We need to change the face of the school, reflecting the students. She has promised us that we will do a series of engagements with the African-American students, and the Somali-American students, find it, uh, teach them the culture of each other, and not only that, she is specifically asking to include everybody. So we are working together. We are not happy about what happened to our young girls. All of them, whether they are African American girls or boys, or so many American girls or boys, they are only one community. And this is very sad. We have to learn from this moment. Thank you. Alison, I also understand, was today's meeting at South High. Uh, thank you for again coming. Let me, let me be very clear about what happened that Thursday. It was a lot of students of a different background and different cultures getting together and, and just creating that, that, that incident. It was not specifically between the two communities that are standing here. Al Flowers, we've been working with him, especially through Abdul Rasak, for a long time. And we are really grateful for his understanding and reaching out to the new community. Now, I want to talk to the parents of the Somali uh, community who are here today. Without your involvement, without you going to the building, without you telling us what your needs are, without you coming to the Tuesday board meetings and articulating uh, what your uh, concerns are, there is no way, no how we will ever understand or being able to respond to. It's up to you to educate, to educate your children. Finally, if there's no question, we would love to close it. How do about it? Uh, How can the board intervene? That's right. The, the board will intervene very simple again, as I said. It. I've laid out very specific action items that we will take. And three of them, we, we nearly have a quorum here. So we have to be very careful. So we have half of the board. <coughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, and we have it uh, almost quorum here. We know that we're gonna take we're gonna take action. Uh, but before I do that, Kate just came all the way. I will definitely let her students speak. Uh, then I will conclude Then we are out. Saida, I'm a senior at South High School. I'm Lemia and I'm a junior at South High. And um, I just wanted to say, just like Director um, Hussein pointed out, we're part of a student group at South that's primarily focused on social and racial justice. And it's called Start Students Together as Allies for Racial Trust. And, you know, the media has been making it out to be that there isn't no support group, but through Start, it's primarily focused on bridging different cultural gaps and promoting cultural competency and also you know, creating awareness that there are different people out there, but then you also, you know, have to learn about yourself as well. You know, you first have to learn about yourself, but then also make an effort to learn about other people as well. But what start, we've, we've been a group that hasn't been noticed, but we're, we're just pretty much focused on creating dialogue. Every single day, that's what we work on. For example, tomorrow we're having a student-led dinner in the media center for two hours, and it's going to be pretty much focused on racial dialogue. So I don't know why people aren't saying that there isn't a support group, because this group had four years at South High School, and you know, people are now starting to realize that there's racism that does exist. And it does, and we do have to talk about it. It's the 20th century, but that doesn't mean that we can just shove it in the closet. So it's something that definitely does exist, and as people who 
as a, as a Somali student, you know, of course people are going to take out the negativity and the stereotypes and they're going to associate you with that. <coughs> but through START, we try to get rid of those. It's pretty much dialogue. I don't know if you want to say um, And, you know, you talk about what the staff should do all the time and what the board should do and what the adults should do, but it's also the question of what should the students do to help bridge, like, their gaps between them because it's, it's really affecting them and they, this, this group really helps students just come together and be, like, be, like, motivated to just connect each other and not be afraid to just speak to each other and speak about race and speak about what's going on in life when you can't do that at school sometimes or outside of school. So I think this group is a really, is being ignored, but it should be um, promoted so that students really get a chance to fix the problem as well as...